Um, so Tabaldi's been presenting online courses for CTA and undergrad for many years with a lot of success. The, the question is, you know, ITC is very different from PGDA or CTA. So, uh, you know, Yvonne, uh, why did we create a separate ITC course when there are so many other providers that's been doing it for many years? Students focus on theory and they want more accounting lectures and more costing lectures and more uh, you know more theory lectures and more this and more knowledge when in reality we're trying to get them to work on application we're trying to get them to work on their communication skill we're trying to get them to do more questions and as hard as you know as hard as we push them in cta to go do more questions and work on your application students always go back to i haven't finished the theory yet i haven't finished the theory yet and this course is, is like a culmination of all the discussions we've had in the background of how do we help students with that shift? How do we help students work on skills other than technical knowledge, the skills that cost them marks in exams because they're not putting their thoughts across properly, they're not applying their knowledge, um, you know, their time management is bad, whatever the case is, um, these are a huge portion uh, you know, this is a huge reason why students are failing. So, so in our course, um, uh, the, uh, the students are obviously going to do a lot of questions. Um, like in, in all the courses, all the lecturers will always tell the students to do a lot of questions. Um, um, but for in our course, the, the focus will be on application, how to score marks, how to communicate, how to physically write it. So um, how, how, how do we do that? So how... How do we help you apart from just telling you, here's a bunch of questions, go and do the questions, go analyze your solutions and fix your problems. How do we help? How does this course of ours help um, the students to do that? What, what we've done with this course, which is so different from anything that, that we've done in the past in, in courses, is um, work on the types of things that I do with my study coaching students, which is to say, let me help you analyze and assess the questions that you do yourself as a student. And let me help you identify what your weaknesses are, what you're struggling with, and then help you fix them yourself. Um, when a student brings a question to me, because of my experience, because of a whole bunch of skills I have, I can say to them, oh, I can see that you know the theory, but you're struggling with communication. But for most students, all they're able to do when they mark their question is go, well, I got it right or I got it wrong. But I don't know why I got it right. And I don't know why I got it wrong. And I don't know how to fix it because I'm not sure if I didn't get the mark because I didn't know the thing, because I didn't know how to apply the thing or because I'm not communicating it properly. So the problem is that students are largely left on their own. You know, even the best courses out there, you'll get something marked by a lecturer once, maybe twice. So if, if we can help you develop the skill yourself that the lecturers have, if you will, of saying, if you look at this that you've done in the question, if you look at this type of thing, look for this, look for that, look for the other, this is going to give you an indication that um, you need more theory or your communication's bad or your application is, is, is a problem. So one of the things we're doing is we're teaching you how to assess your weaknesses, not did I get it right or did I get it wrong? But why did I get it wrong? What's the underlying issue here so that you can work on your own stuff? Because how many questions do you do to prepare for an exam? And all of them, you're on your own. Nobody's looking at them. No lecturer is looking at them. Um, you're just left to yourself to go, well, I got three out of 20. I guess I don't know my stuff. I'm going to go back to theory. And as lecturers, we're going, don't go back to theory. <laughs> but what else are you supposed to do? So, so in this course, obviously, there's a lot of videos that students are going to work through initially, um, the study coaching stuff, um, and then there are going to be a lot of questions. So it's not a, the, not a matter of just watching the videos and then you'll pass the ITC. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that would have been perfect, and we yeah. can do that. Um, and then there's obviously the revision as well. But um, So this is, this is more than just motivational stuff and then students going on their own yeah. doing the questions and asking if they get stuck so this is a the process is um is is much more involved um, yeah than the part of the part of the stuff that students are going to work through up front is 
um, what I call sort of step one of my study coaching program, which is uh, sort of identifying the underlying issues that we have when we study. So for example, most students I know really don't like doing questions. You know, they will find all sorts of reasons and excuses why today is not the day to do a question, you know, and there's always a valid reason why, like, I just can't do a question yet, even though, you know, even though they've passed CTA, you know, like we've passed CTA, so they shouldn't be afraid of questions, but they still avoid them. Um, and there's really good reasons for that, that most students don't actually understand. The more that you understand what's driving your decisions, what's driving what's going on in your head, um, your emotions, because this is a highly stressful situation. It's a high, you know, it, it means so much to the student. They've got so much in emotional investment in there. Um, there's an enormous amount of stuff going on in your head that students don't realize. So to start off with, um, we identify your study strategy. Let's, let's give you a study strategy. Let me practically tell you how you should be studying for this. Let me explain to you all the underlying stuff that you're going to be struggling with. The stuff that you don't necessarily think about, you know, the stuff that you're not really aware of, um, you know, for example, the fact that the fact that you're a perfectionist is affecting your studies, but we don't really think about that. We don't really understand that. How does that work? What does that actually mean to us? From there, then we say, okay, now let's get to questions. Now that you understand where these challenges are coming from, now that you understand why you're stressed out, now that you understand why you dislike questions so much and why you avoid them, now let's get to questions. And we structured it so that you do a question, you, we, we give you the skill, this is what we want to get out of this question, this is, this is the underlying skill of the question, um, go do the question, here's how we would have approached the question, the methodology, and only once you've submitted that and gotten feedback from us as lecturers, will you go to the next question. So it's far more structured, um, you know, it's far more structured in terms of, you know, do a question, go through the process, identify what you need to work on from that question, go off and fix what you need to fix, and then go and do the next question. So it's important to understand that, that the first question that the, if you are now new in this course, when you do that first question, the aim is not to see how well you do in the question. Yeah. And if you get 10% of the question, that's absolutely fine. And it's almost expected because it is a, a recent ITC question. Um, but it, the, there's, uh, the reason why you do it is to learn a skill that you will then apply to all yeah. the other questions that you do. And each time for each new task, you learn another new skill while you're also practicing a proper ITC question. Yeah. Um, and you're identifying areas where you, you may need theory um, or other yeah. areas where you think you need theory, but you don't. Yeah. So, so if, if you're wondering where you need to start, you basically, there's, there's nothing you have to do to prepare to start for this course. You yeah. don't have to do any revision, even yeah. if you know you can't remember standard costing. Uh, you don't have to read through any other notes. You just start watching the videos and follow the, the, the process. And yeah. if there's anything that you do need to do, we will ask you in the videos, do you this do yeah. or submit this or fill in this and reflect on it. Um, yeah. But you don't have to, you just follow the process and fairly soon you'll get to start doing questions and we do go through quite a lot of questions before you, we set you off on your own to do more questions uh, yeah. for, for those yeah. who have time left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And each to, to clarify each of the, each of the questions are there to, um, to help you achieve a specific skill. So it's not, you know, it's not like, we're doing a manic question, we're doing an audit question, we're doing a tax question. What we're doing is saying, uh, we need to help you uh, plan your case study better because a lot of students lose marks because you know, they don't finish reading through the case study in time or they read the question wrong, uh, you know, they misread the question or whatever the case is. So we need to help you improve your skill of how you plan the question. And oh, by the way, we're gonna use this question from a past ITC paper to, to show you how to do that. So for each one of the tasks, it's not about the technical stuff, it's not about the subject. For each one of the tasks, it's about saying, here is a skill. This is an exam uh, study. This is a methodology that you need to learn to approach any question, any question, whatever subject it is. Like, I don't care what the subject is, no matter what subject or what topic you're dealing with, you need to know and have a better skill of planning out your case study. 
that doesn't matter what the topic is. Your case study needs to be planned well. So here's a methodology for planning. And we're going to use this question to, to, to apply that um, and to help you apply that so that after that, you know, once you practice that skill, you're then able to plan any case study on any topic on anything. So each of the tasks that we've assigned have nothing to do with topics. It's not about topics. It's about underlying skill, the ability to gather marks in, in dif difficult areas, structuring discussion questions, you know, your communication skills, all of this type of thing. These are all underlying skills to every single topic. And we will use past ITC questions to show you yeah. how it applies. The upfront, the intro stuff is not warm, fuzzy stuff. It's not feel good. It's not, you know, like visualization techniques. It's not motivation. It's not antidepressant. It's very, very practical stuff about understanding how your brain works because you, you're trying to achieve something that is very difficult and you've got to make sure that you are working with your brain. And for most of us, we haven't thought about how our brains actually work, the messages that, you know, the internal messaging that we get. And it's easy to say, oh, you know, if I just knew my accounting better, I'd be fine. But I haven't yet come across a student who doesn't benefit from this stuff. 90% of them don't want to hear it to start off with because they're like, I don't have time for it. And 100% of them come back to me afterwards and go, actually, I really needed to hear that. So mm -hmm. if that's you, I challenge you to go through the stuff and if you're able to come back to me afterwards and go, that meant nothing to me, did not relate to me at all, was absolutely like a waste of time, then we'll figure out a way to, to make your time worthwhile. But um, absolutely have not yet come across a student who, who didn't benefit from, from, from going through all the stuff that, that we've got in there. I like that again, where don't do anything else, just yeah. do this yeah. and you'll yeah. get to, and do it quickly. That's the other thing that I'm always worried about courses that structured in a certain way because somehow your brain spreads it out because you think oh, I've got two months, I've got two months to work through this course. And but we questions. want them to work yeah. through it as quickly as possible so they can get to more I stuff know. using this. Yeah. I think the, the, the other thing that students need to, to realize is that when you sign up for this course, you've committed to mm. doing what we yeah. tell you to do. And I yeah. think that's a little easier said than done, yeah. but you, you know, when you pay your money, you've committed to saying, okay, you know, Yvonne Francois, if you tell me to do this, I will do it. But yeah, then you yeah. have to actually go and do it. And in this particular case, because of the time limits and because of the stuff we're trying to do, um, mm. we're going to push, you know, we're going to push those students to, to actually do the stuff. Like we've yeah. got, you know, X amount of questions in there that they need to do and give feedback on. Um, and we've got do-it-yourself questions in there as well, which is, you know, you've done that, go and, go and do this again, you know, go and consolidate your understanding and reinforce the skill yourself and then go to the next question. But a lot of students will do one question every two weeks. I'm a new student in this course and I see there's a bunch of study help videos in the beginning and there's some tasks later on. Um, can I, how do I plan my study period so say i've got two months can i spread this out over two months so i start and work out so i finish with the last task the week before the itc um or i see uh, you offer quite a lot of help with how to work through questions is it fine if i just watch all the videos and listen to everything you say or do i actually have to do a lot of stuff do i have to because i am um, uh, i'm paying a lot of money money i want yeah. to uh, get out to pass this test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it enough or? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's a really good question. And um, I think the answer is that you need, you need to get this done as fast as possible because. I, I want to just tell you before you, I, I just want to interrupt and, and stress why I'm asking this because yeah. we are all lecturers and we've seen all the time. <laughs> uh, we've seen thousands of students and we know from experience that, I don't want to say percentages, but it's more than half of students think if they pay for something, it will help without them doing anything. So I just. <laughs> I think we, look, let's be honest. Every single one of us as humans have signed up for courses <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. we haven't finished. Like, yeah, 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 that you go, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know, but, but this, this is kind of like saying, um, if I sign up at the gym with a personal trainer, Yvonne, 
um, if I pay my money and I listen to the personal trainer speak, will I lose weight and get a six pack? Exactly. No. If I listen to what the personal trainer does and then, you know, like if I'm trying to, if, I, if I'm trying to look awesome for, for my friend's wedding, which is in like six months time, do I buy the course now and then start doing exercises one month before my friend's wedding? Yes. Or, you know, the smart money is on saying, I'm paying my money now. I need to go through these skills and I need to do this stuff as fast as possible. I need to work through this stuff and continue applying it because the value of this is not going to come from the first time you do it because that's when you learn how to do it and the stuff that you're like, I thought I knew that, I'm comfortable with that, I'm not, this is new, this is different, whatever. We only learn and improve from repetition. And it's not repeating the same question, it's repeating the skill. So you need to go back to the gym tomorrow and do more push-ups. You need to go back to the gym the day after. You can't go to the gym once and say, well, I've done push-ups now. So no. now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to look great. You have to keep consistently applying it. So each of the tasks that we've done, they build on each other in terms of the skills. So by the time you're done, you have this really amazing set of skills of how to answer questions and how to deal with challenges. The sooner you can get that out the way, the sooner you're able to just practice questions properly and work on those skills because I can't improve your communication skills in two questions. It's going to take more than that because you've communicated the way you have. You've been writing sentences and thinking the way you have for, how old are you now, Franz? For 25? <laughs> <laughs> 25, 26 maybe? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> this, is, this is how you think. And you're looking at ITC questions and going, crap, I can't say stuff like that. My stuff doesn't look like that. It's not going to take one question. This isn't, this isn't a life hack. The stuff that we're doing here is not a quick fix of saying, you know, um, oh, it's, you know, this is a, like an exam game kind of thing that if you, if you do this, you'll get that. If you do that, you'll get that. These are skills that we're trying to help you build, which means if you're doing one question a week, you're going to be in trouble. You know, I'm expecting that every time you sit down and do a study session, you're doing a question. And I'm expecting that at this particular point in time, you've got more than one study session a week. Yeah. You know. And the nice thing about following the process and step by step, as we build on the skills using um, ITC questions, doing it early on, because you're going to practice or you're going to do a lot of questions after you've gone through the tasks. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to be doing those questions in between. You want to finish the course uh, because uh, you don't want to work waste time doing 10 questions in the wrong way, like scanning yeah. the solutions like yeah. we all want to yeah. do. First work <laughs> yeah, through yeah. the course and get all the skills. And then mm -hmm. every single question you do after that, using those skills, got that skills goal. will be worth so much more than yeah. doing it the wrong way to get ready for this course. So the I course know. really is there for someone that's just starting out now. You haven't done any ITC yeah. prep yet. The I last agree. thing you did was ITC. You can't remember any of the theory. You don't need to go through it again before you start this. You, what you need to do is you need to get through this course as quickly as possible, doing yeah. everything we tell yeah. you to do. And then there's so much more that you can do, but then you're yeah. going to do it the right way. You don't want to be doing push-ups the wrong way and you mess up your back or you do this yeah. or that. You want to, yeah. once you know and you've practiced um, the it the right way and it becomes second nature and yeah. you understand the process, then every single time you go and practice something, it yeah. will add uh, yeah to the success I, in the I end. I absolutely agree. And I think we, we, we need to make clear, and what I, what I want to make clear is that the course has got links to all the theory. So inside the course, you'll find links to all those sections from the CTA syllabus. So, you know, as you're going through the stuff, if you're going, wow, I really like never even touched capital gains tax there is a section, you can go and fix your knowledge. That's not a problem. It is there, it is available. But before you run off and go, let me go and study capital gains tax first, and then I will start doing questions, we need to shift that around and go start by understanding the skill that's required from you of the capital gains question. And the skill is not, do you know capital gains tax? The skill is discussion, explanation, understanding, structuring, thought processes, problem solving, those are the skills. 
And we're going to talk about that first. Then once you've covered that with us and you go, yeah, but CGT, great, that's fine. Here's the link, go and revise, you know, go and revise your CGT under, you know, certain, certain criteria and like keep it, you know, keep the time limited. So the theory is there and it is available, but if you're sitting going, I'm going to learn all my theory first and then I'll do questions, you're just like the thousands and thousands and thousands of students every year that fail their exams because they never got to questions. They never had time to develop the skill of doing questions, of what it is that the exam actually wants from them. It's worth it to stress here that whenever you find yourself clicking on a link to your revision, that you pause for a moment and you must be mindful and very aware of what you're doing. Yeah. And if, if, it, if it's not coming from something we said in the course, yeah. then you shouldn't really be clicking on it. Um, yeah. it's, it's, and, and you'll see that in the discussions, in the study coaching, you'll, you'll see that. But it is a, it's a warning that that is something that if you click on it, it must raise, raise a yeah. red flag yeah. if Please it doesn't not. come yeah. from, if it's yeah. not an outcome uh, from one of the tasks that you did. Yeah. If yeah. it's you yeah. sitting there and you want to start your study session and you want to start clicking on that revision just to get yourself, that is uh, that is very yeah. dangerous. And, and that is why it's so important to follow the process because you can really waste a lot of time yeah. um, and yeah. then you don't know why you failed yeah. in the end. So when, please when I, when I work, be aware. 100%. When I work with students, 100% of students will tell me, Yvonne, I need to do theory first. And when I spend time with them, 100% of them, I tell them they need to go into questions first. Because Ooh. I don't like, I don't care how little you know. I don't care what you know. I don't care what you don't know. I know what you don't know. I know what you do know. And I'm still telling you that you need to do questions first. And again, the course, that, the, the structure of the course, the way it's laid out, explains all of this. I've explained the logic behind it, explains where all of the stuff comes from. And it's pure logic. Um, pure objective based thinking. Um, so yeah, as, as, as you say, Francois, if you're clicking on theory, you've got to be very careful about why you're doing it. If it's because you want to feel comfortable, you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're kind of so like, well, I don't feel good about yeah. my theory here. You're, you're doing the wrong thing. So next go click on the next video and watch that and move on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Follow the process. laughs> yeah. Good luck. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah.